What's up, YouTube? This is Kevin from SimpleDrummer.com. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Who's That Drummer? Today I have with me a longtime friend and outstanding drummer, Jeff Luciani. Hey there, how you doing? I'm really pumped to uh, talk to Jeff a little bit about his experiences and his career in drumming with all of you at home. So let's jump right into it. Can you tell us a little bit about your first experience ever playing music with other people? Yeah, I don't know about the first experience ever, but I do remember some early memories, again, through elementary school, of playing with friends of mine who were learning how to play the guitar and learning about all that kind of stuff and the music that was on at the time and kind of the mid-90s that we were all listening to. And uh, so we learned tunes by Nirvana and Pearl Jam and played them together. You know, we learned them on our own. Or people were taking guitar lessons and me again, drum lessons, and the teachers would help us kind of learn the songs and we would go and kind of play them together as friends. And then I did a theater gig in grade seven or eight at our kind of elementary school production. What was it? I think it was Jesus Christ Superstar. It was a Catholic school. <laughs> and uh, and that, that was a very strong moment for me because it, I, I got to play music or at my first time playing music with like a visual, like seeing actors and dancers and like this whole kind of visual performance going on and then like accompanying that. That's great. That's a pretty high pressure first gig. Yeah. And I remember, yeah. And I remember it was like, man, I was like big drums and fun music and smashing them. And I was like, I can't play like that. Like the music was just easy beats, but like, I can't play loud. So I remember taping Kleenex to the end of my drumstick. You know? And I remember <laughs> yeah. like someone was like, oh, you could try these brushes. I was like, okay. DIY dynamics. Yeah, totally. That's, <laughs> that's totally it. <laughs> to this day, I think I still do that once in a while. <laughs> so when the first time I played with my friends or played with others, I don't quite remember. But the first time I did like a theater show or something like that, that was a, you know, a memory burned for all time. <laughs> wow, that's great. Yeah. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you can stay in the loop for all of our future videos. So everybody has a number of influences and it's hard to narrow that down into just a select few, but I'm gonna make you do that. Let's try top three. Top three drumming heroes of all time for you. Okay, well let's, We'll, we'll break it down into f stages of my life and experience and career as a musician. I think early on, um, out of the gate kind of thing, I, I, I listened to a lot of Nirvana, as a lot of us did as kids of the 90s. I, Dave Grohl, for sure. I learned a lot of the, of the tunes. You know, I tried to learn the parts, you know, hit by hit. Uh, so I was really familiar with that stuff. And then through my teen years, I started, you know, in high school listening to a lot of other music. But the next kind of big influence uh, was when um, I went to Mohawk College, which is in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Uh, and they had a great applied music program there, which was fake, focused more on jazz. Uh, and I heard Paul Modian or Paul Motion, whoever wants to, you know, yeah. <laughs> people like to change the name there. But Paul Modian uh, for the first time. And that was kind of groundbreaking to me because we were learning so much about jazz in that program and a lot of a lot of great jazz drummers of course i mean we can name a hundred of them who are all influential but hearing him for the first time it was something completely different yeah. and uh, and that totally changed the game for me in terms of how to approach that music and and approach the drums and music in general yeah composition he, he definitely has a unique voice when yeah. it comes to that yeah absolutely yeah, and then a little later in life, I'd say uh, for me later in life, I guess maybe mid to late 20s, um, I heard Afrobeat kind of one for the first time. So Tony Allen, like another game changer and uh, another way of hearing the drum set played in a unique way, totally, again, changed everything, just blew open doors um, and went down a deep whole of Tony's playing and, and Afrobeat music and kind of contemporary Afrobeat music, the whole thing, all, all because of Tony. So yeah, I'd have to say top three, as I sit here speaking with you and off the top of my head, would have been Dave Grohl, Paul Modian, and Tony Allen. Yeah. Wow, great, great yeah. answers.
So you have played the drums for the Deers for yeah. a number of years now. How did you end up getting that gig? Yes, uh, I was playing with uh, some friends of mine in Niagara. Shout out to Jake Zapatochny, Brendan Fletcher. We had a band called Rogni. I believe they were getting the album mixed or mastered uh, by uh, a great musician, great guy, Joseph Donovan, out in Montreal. Either he heard me drumming on that record. I don't know if I played on it, though. Or he saw us live. I think that's what it was. We played Montreal. He saw us live. And I think, so, I think Joseph passed on to Murray, me, like, introduced, you know, my name to, to him. And, uh, and it kind of started from there. You've done a lot of work with the Deers, both in the studio and also on the road. Of all of those experiences and everything that you've accomplished with that group, what are you the most proud of? I think I'm, I'm pretty proud of the job I've done. Like, you know, I, I took it seriously in terms of, uh, I, I looked up to the band, first of all, I was a fan. So it was a bit, not nerve wracking, but I don't know, I felt a little bit of pressure, you know, just on myself. And I, I, I feel good that I was able to kind of take from them as a band in the past and me kind of learning about what was going on at the time and they kind of meshed them to some I'm proud of like you know kind of keeping with Deer's tradition but also kind of doing my own thing as well kind of drumming with the band um so uh, yeah I think I think I'm proud of that uh and you know leading up to us playing on Letterman was was a pretty proud moment that was because I'm a huge fan of David Letterman and to play his show was was uh yeah dream come true yeah. yeah and while he was still still hosting the show still hosting the show and and a fan of the band that was their second time there my first but their second um and and uh paul paul schaefer played along with us and we had some horn arrangements so the band the band was playing and hanging and, and it was uh yeah it was fun quite the experience what is the coolest place you have ever been to to play a show Ooh, okay well we can think grandiose and we can think kind of small too i i think i mean my first time playing in istanbul was pretty amazing because we've played this it was part of the istanbul jazz festival with the deers which is kind of hilarious um but just the setting was incredible um you know we're right on the water and it was just just you know the, the architecture of the area was was uh yeah it was pretty incredible so that was that was a standout moment We've played there since a few times, but in clubs, which is still incredible. But this stage, was I've never played anything like it before. If you had to go an entire two-month tour eating the same meal, what could you actually stomach for that many consecutive meals? I'd probably do like a Chipotle kind of thing, you know? Like uh, if there were Chipotle restaurants around, I would, I would do that. I, I just, I've been kind of getting into burritos or wraps. That type of thing. I, I, I could eat that for a couple of months. That would probably kill my digestive <laughs> system, yeah, I gotta actually, tell you. I mean, I, I wouldn't choose that for myself, but I'm glad that you've got an iron stomach, buddy. That's pretty good. Well, I mean, I'm saying that sitting here, not doing it for two months, that, that might change, but. Uh... So one of the great things about being a professional drummer is that you get to see lots of different places. You get to travel a lot. What is a place in the world that you've never been to that you've always wanted to travel to? Uh, Japan. Never been. Would love to go. No particular city. Um, I, I mean, I'd love to see Tokyo and, and kind of get the whole thing. And I'd love to get more rural countryside experience. So I've never been to Japan. Would love to go to Japan. If you were suddenly transported to an alternate dimension where everyone was a cartoon character, who would you be and why? Well, probably just because the cartoon character had an impact on me as a child would be Marvin the Martian. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure why, I, what characteristic traits. I can't re quite remember his characteristic traits, but I just loved Marvin the Martian. So that would be my answer. Hands down, what is the best concert that you've ever been to? I saw Brian Blade's Fellowship at the Vanguard. Ooh. Happening. <laughs> yeah. I'd have to put that. It's up there. Without, you know, going too much into thinking about all the concerts, I mean, that had a profound impact, as of course. Uh, so I'll, I'll say that one.
Amazing. And in such an intimate environment. Oh, my God. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we were kind of in the middle of, of, of the layout. So it was, yeah, we were pretty much right up, you know, right on there. And they would walk by our table to, to get to the uh, back kitchen where, you know, in between intermission. So they were just walking around and playing right in front of us. And, and the, the power of that band, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible. So, yeah, I'd say that. Great. Especially in that venue, it's it's one thing I've seen them before in, in more of a, you know, um, theater setting. But there, forget about it. It was forget forget about it. Oh yeah, man, yeah. in stereo. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So now let's talk about your drumming in the practice room. When you finally have some time to sit down and play whatever it is that you want to play, no tunes to work on for gigs or anything like that, what kinds of things do you like working on? Lately, especially through this year and, and uh, being you know in quarantine, I, fortunately I had access to my drums uh, with not a lot of work. So I found myself practicing because I wanted to, uh, I play a lot. I play along to a lot of music, mainly from the '60s. I like a lot of uh, music from from France in the '60s and like B British '60s music and American '60s music. Anything kind of from the '60s. I, I like the feel of the music and, and the way the drummers played. So I love playing along to that kind of music and, and to kind of capture that feel. Uh, I've been working out of uh, the great Jim Blackley. And uh, his books um, kind of leaf through there and, and work on some of my technique and, and phrasing, my timing in the jazz, uh, you know, area. Uh, I practice improvising. Uh, Billy Martin's uh, African Origins of Clave, I believe it's called, the rhythm book, uh, is, ah, it's, it's amazing. I always kind of pick something out of there. So between play-alongs, Jim Blackley, kind of jazz work, uh, improvising, Billy Martin's book, um, that, that gets me through time at the drums alone. Cool. Yeah, great stuff. What are some of your current goals as a drummer, um, not just in the practice room, but also in your career? Uh, in the practice room, at the drums, it's just, uh, I think you get to the point where you just want the music to be deeper. You want, you want to feel more connected you want to feel more relaxed. You want to be more aware of, of your movements and the sounds you're creating. So to me, that's that's been a focus as of late. Um, nothing super technical uh, at the moment, just more more of a connection, something a little deeper. Uh, the tone I'm getting um, and uh, the, the awareness that I have while playing and the kind of... Uh, calm mind while playing those are my, my those are things i'm working on uh, overall in my career uh, a goal i never much had goals which is a blessing and a curse uh so i don't have much going forward other than just creating more i think that that's something i, I want to do more in my career and as a as a musician and a drummer is just to create more of what I'm hearing and feeling, um, as opposed to what I've made my career mostly in, in supporting an other artist's vision is now taking the time to kind of um, listen to what I have to want to play and share and, and kind of go about getting it out and creating that way. Great. What advice would you offer to everyone watching at home who is a younger drummer just getting started in their career working on learning how to play and maybe has aspirations of being a professional like you one day. Um, what kind of advice would you offer them? Uh, if you're kind of just starting out and getting it going, definitely have fun. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're studying with a teacher, or you're learning something technical, do the work, have a balance between doing the work and having fun. You know, it's, it's good to, to have both. You don't want to kind of neglect the the hard technical work and have too much fun or get too bogged down by the technique and uh, the theoretical stuff and, and not enjoy yourself. So just have fun, uh, keep learning, and, and keep uh, your ears open to new music. Can you 
tell us about an instance in your life when you feel that you really failed in some way and what you learned from that experience moving forward? What I consider not not necessarily a failure, but like a not not even a regret, but uh, yeah, something I wish I was aware of was coming out of school, Mohawk College, you know, early twenties. I didn't necessarily follow a path that I think I needed to follow. I I I think I got a little astray and followed a path that I thought I needed to follow, which was, you know, just to kind of work and try to make it in, 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 um, as a musician, as a sideman playing drums. Uh, when ultimately I, I, by taking that path, which I'm grateful for, and it's proved a lot of, uh, great experiences. I, I sacrificed, I think an expression of how I wanted to play the drums early on that, um, I'm kind of reconnecting with now, but put a, you know, on the on the side burner for for many many years. So a so a failure is to recognize the importance of following one's vision and 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 uh, uh, expression, uh, but kind of putting that aside and 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 um, doing maybe what you're kind of thought to supposed to do. Now, I didn't quite know I was making that decision at that time. Um, it occurred to me a little bit later on. But, uh, yeah, I, I never really followed wholeheartedly the music I wanted to play. If you could take a lesson from any drummer who is alive today, who would it be? Uh, I think I'd pick two. Uh, it would be Milford Graves. Uh, there's something about his music and his energy and his study of the human body, uh, as well as music that I find really fascinating. And I'd love to just kind of hang with him and pick his brain. And the other would be uh, rock alum Bob Moses, who, I mean, when I first heard him on, on Matheny's record, um, Bright Size Life, uh, I was like, well, who is that? You know, uh, and then all these years later, kind of following what he's done musically, and especially now what he does uh, really resonates with me. In, in terms of improvisation, he's got a lot of Brazilian stuff together, just a lot of world music. He's, he just seems like a really deep spiritual guy, and, and, and both of them do. And I would like to learn from them, drumming-wise, spiritual-wise. Um, I, think, I think that'd be great. Cool. Jeff, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you here to share your experiences and some of your stories with uh, all the folks at home. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, I hope some... Some of this passes along to uh, and resonates with someone who hears it. Um, but it was a blast being here. Great to see you again. It's been a while having, you know, seeing friends through uh, the, this time here in 2020. Um, so thanks for having me. This bump? Yeah. That's, that's sure. still okay, right? That's, I COVID, think it's good. It's yeah, okay. I'm it's all right. We'll wash our hands. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, man.